So yeah, welcome everyone. Again, thank you so much for joining us and being part of our last Strategies for Success um, workshop today. For those who don't know me, my name is Melissa Rogers and I'm the Student Activity Officer for the Multicultural Student Center at Bristol. Um, and every semester we work with different folks on campus to bring workshops and strategies and tips of different things that students have told us um, they might need a little more help with or would have liked to know a little bit more strategies on their first couple semesters of college. Um, and this semester, we've been very, very fortunate to work with the Office of Disability Services, and in particular, Kit Kelleher, who's a learning specialist, and she's been giving us all kinds of great tips and strategies to kind of get through our, our semester here in Bristol. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to Kit. Thanks so much, Melissa. Hi, everybody. Um, I love our audience. So even if I can't see your faces and I just see your names, um, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedules. We've been doing um, workshops on time management and planning. And I know even attending something like this, that's even just an hour out of your day can, can be a lot um, and you're making room for that. So I really appreciate that. Um, but I'm, I welcome you to our third installment of Strategies for Success this fall. And this comes in perfect time um, as we're kind of getting ready for that all-encompassing finals. Um, we were just having a conversation before we hit the record button about how anxiety really starts to build up and nerves and everything. And that's very common. So if you are feeling that way right now, just know that you, you are feeling what everyone else is feeling. Um, but I can't say that those feelings are necessarily helpful when it comes to studying and getting that memory and that attention back on track. So what I'm hoping today is to spend a little bit of time to give you some ideas and suggestions, um, not only for exam planning, but just overall you know, attention and memory as you can maybe develop more efficient study skills. That's, that's really the main purpose for this. Um, like Melissa mentioned, I'm a learning specialist and um, I work specifically in the New Bedford office where, where I am today. It's very warm in here. So forgive me with my pink fuzzy sweater. Um, so if you see me sweating, it's not because I'm nervous because I'm not, uh, but it is a little bit warm on this chilly day. Uh, but I am also on top of working here at Bristol. I've been an executive function coach and a college professor for several years. And one of the things I, I focus on a lot are these kinds of life building habits. And that's exactly what they are. These are habits that take time. Um, it takes a lot of practice and even just learning one new way of doing thing and practicing that over and over till it almost becomes automatic, that to me is success. So if you can just even get one thing out of today, whether it's a resource, a tool, a link, a new location where you're going to change your own study habits, then I feel that that's been a success for this particular hour. Um, I'm going to be very open and let you know that multitasking is not my forte. So it is really difficult for me to look at the chat box and answer questions and show my screen. I can't do all that. So Melissa is going to help me along with that with chat. So I'll stop along the way to see if people have questions again. You can wait at the end if you don't want to ask a question. We totally understand, um, but I will let Melissa kind of take care of that. And also along the way, I'll be stopping because there will be links to some really cool resources or maybe even a resource or two that you'll be able to walk away with by two o'clock today. And we'll be sharing that in the chat. This is also being recorded because we now also have a playlist. So our workshops that we've been doing on different strategies are all a part of a playlist. And within that playlist, you will also see resources that go with each of the recordings. So I just wanted to share that out with you because they're starting to build an audience and I'm really happy about that. So there we go. So let's go ahead. I'm going to um, share my screen and you're going to see my very... Um, you know, it's a very black and white presentation and that's okay. Things like this tend to be a little bit more accessible anyways, but this is about attention and memory and we're calling it um, Strategies for Success. My name is Kit Kelleher and 
I welcome you. So let's, let's see what this is all about. And I always like to begin, not with me, but with you. I would love to know a little bit more about you. And since we're kind of getting into not just the holiday season, but finals season, I'd like to get a feel for how you feel you are as a study person, as a student. How do you study? So we're going to go ahead and launch a poll. I should be able to do it. And our question is, how do you study for finals? You should be able to see all of the different choices here and you can choose more than one choice and I welcome you to do that. So if you could please go ahead and I invite you to take a look at our choices. I don't study a lot. I study a little each day. I usually study the weekend before. I study the night before. I use my notes and class resources. I study with a friend or classmate. I seek help from a tutor. I rewrite key points or information, or I use tools like Quizlet or flashcards. So even if you are not taking classes right this minute, just think of yourself even as a student because we're always learning. <laughs> I always like to say I'm a student of my students. We're always in the mode of learning. I love the participation so far. Wow, look at that. Okay, let's give it about 10 more seconds. And we'll go ahead and show the results. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much for participating in that. And let's go ahead and take a look at the results. Can you see them? Thumbs up if you can see the results. Yeah, awesome. So let's take a look at our, our, big, um, our big responses. Our, I use my notes and class resources. I rewrite key points of information, okay? Followed by, I study the night before, very common. And then some people mention they don't study a lot or they maybe they just study a little each day. And it looks like studying with a friend or using tools like Quizlet aren't real popular options. Okay, so that's okay. We're gonna find out a little bit more about how some of these could be considered passive learning or passive studying and others could be considered active studying or active learning and kind of the difference and maybe by the end of our hour you'll maybe switch your own thinking to do a little bit more of active studying and active learning because that's really what this is about if we can kind of tune into our own attention and our own memory and we can find new ways of doing things we're activating a lot more of our brain. And that's really, that's what it's all about. So let me go back over here. For those of you who've seen previous recordings or you attended previous sessions, this suitcase might look a little bit familiar and it's there for a reason. Um, we have been talking about executive function skills and those are really these lifelong habits that make us efficient human beings. How we plan things, how we manage our time, how we regulate our emotions and advocate for ourselves, how we attend to things and focus our memory. All of these things are a part of executive functioning. And the reason I have a suitcase there is because my my having trouble with my clicker today, forgive me. Um, we have a suitcase right in the front of our brain and it is our prefrontal cortex. And I talked about this before, but our prefrontal cortex is where all of these executive function habits and skills are stored. And someone who I was talking with earlier was mentioning they were feeling stressed out and like very overwhelmed. And there's a reason for that because that suitcase in your brain gets filled up very easily. It gets filled up day in and day out. It's like going on a trip and not really knowing where you're going. So you pack everything and then you can't close your suitcase. Well, if you can't close your suitcase, you're gonna have to throw some things out in order for it to fit. Well, that's like our prefrontal cortex or the suitcase of our brain. When it gets filled with emotions, hunger, illness, stress, worry, joy, when it gets filled up with all of those things, 
all that information that we're trying to learn and study that's supposed to be going through our prefrontal cortex into our long-term memory, it gets kicked out. It, it really does. There's tons of studies on this. So attention, focus, and memory, which we're gonna talk about today, those can be really, really difficult in times of stress. So take a breath, breathe in, breathe out, because as we enter the month of December, it's probably one of the most stressful months of the year. And what happens in December? Finals. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, there's a reason for it. So maybe there are ways and maybe there are strategies that we can work on that can help close our suitcase, empty it out a little bit so that we can spend a little bit more time to study and focus more efficiently, okay? So that's really what this is all about. So in my last sessions, I talked about the power of three. Three, number one, is my favorite number. So I like to use the number three a lot. I was born on the third of the month. And would you believe, just, just off topic, I'm the 333rd person in my named family. How weird is that? So yes, I love the number three. But I also think that we remember things when they are grouped in small amounts. That's why phone numbers and addresses get chunked. And we tend to be able to remember those things because they're chunked. So I think when we're given new information, if we can chunk it into small amounts, it's easier for us to remember. So if we can chunk things maybe in threes, we're gonna have a better chance of remembering things versus a list of 25 new vocabulary words. So when we think of building our own attention and focus, there's three things I'd like us to really focus on today. The what of what we're learning, and that is what is it that is going to be most valuable for us to study and pay attention to, okay? What is going to get us the the better grade? What is it that's going to offer the most points? Okay, that's the what. Yes, those smaller items, maybe discussion posts, things like that, those are great. But if we spend too much time on those things and those are only giving us one or two points, but we have a 20 point assignment coming up that we've kind of blown off, chances are that's really going to impact us. So we need to find out what is going to give us the biggest return in our grades. So that's really important for us to understand. But you know what else is important? Where we do all of this. Where is it that we tend to study? Think about that. Um, if you happen to go on campus and right now during our pandemic and during COVID, we tend to be home more. We're not out in public, but where we study can be very, very important because when things are a novelty to us or when things are kind of new or kind of different, believe it or not, we remember things better. It jogs our memory better. So if we can find new places or different places to study, not uncomfortable places, but places where our body, body does feel comfortable, but it's a, just a little bit different, chances are we can remember our content better and we can remember what we studied in that area. And then how we study and how we focus on our information is also super duper important. So before we get right into things, I want to stop right here and just see, are, are there any questions in our chat or does anybody have a question before we move on? Nope. Okay. So we will move on then. All right. So let's take a look at the what. And right here, you will see that I have a red asterisk and I did that on purpose because my memory does not always serve me well. So even though I've been doing these kinds of things forever and ever, I also need to give myself little reminders of what it is I need to focus on. So this is a perfect example that on this slide, this reminds me that this is a slide where now Melissa will, or, or someone who's working with Melissa, will upload some um, links or resources for you in the chat box, 
okay? So think about when you're studying, if there's certain information that you need to study and it's really, really important, is there something special that you can do next to that piece of information? Can you highlight it in a color you really like? Can you put a star around it? Can you put a big bubble around it? Research says underlining things is one of the best ways to really focus on content. Although it's not the way I like to do things, but they do say that's, that's what research says. So what I wanted to show you here is I wanted to show you kind of a learning map that you could use during finals time or during some kind of an exam time. And what I'm giving you, what you're going to get to walk away with is a blank version of this. So you will see a Word document uploaded um, into the chat box related to a blank version of this, but this is something where I looked at a couple of classes and I tried not to use Bristol classes or classes from a from the school where I teach at. So they're very, very general and very, very generic, okay? Um, but I, I have a math class, I have a psychology class and I have a biology class. Say those are my classes. I really need to know what it is I need to focus on. So the first thing I need to do, and this is gonna be a really good time for me to do it before I have to start really studying, is I have to kind of map out what it is I need to do. I should know the date of my exam. Is it gonna be online or is it gonna be in person? Is it gonna be on paper or is it gonna be timed on the computer? Those are things I really should know and chances are they're going to be in my syllabus. Or if they're not, then it's something I need to ask my instructors or my professors, that's going to be really important. What are going to be some of those key topics that are gonna be on my exam? Maybe this is where I can list them. Well, what materials do I know I already have that are gonna help me study for these things? Maybe I've got notes in Blackboard. Maybe my instructors gave me some cool videos on Khan Academy. Maybe I've got some flashcards that I created along the way. Maybe I need to ask one of my friends or my classmates if I can borrow their notes and we can, we can share notes just to make sure I didn't miss anything. And then that, that other column is maybe there's some, some things that I have missed along the way. I forgot to watch a video. I missed class a couple of weeks ago because I was sick and I need to go back and review. But if I can plan out all of these items before it's actually time to study, then I'm not cramming at the last minute of what to study I already know. So I have given you a version of this kind of planning map in, as a blank document, but I wanna show you a really cool tool. So I'm gonna stop sharing for a moment and I wanna go online because you should have received the link to this source. So let me just go ahead real quick. Let me find it. I have to just go into my... Um, Go into my Google. You should have received a link to this. Forgive me, whenever we exchange, um, takes a little bit of time. You should have gotten a link to the Learning Center from, from UNC, the University of North Carolina. They've got some really cool planning tools right here. They've got some in Word form, in PDF form. They've got one right here that says final exam planner. And if I click word, it will download a document for me. But I, I think if I put it in a PDF format, you guys should be able to see it as well. Can you see my PDF format? Did it show up? Excellent. Look at this. Just like the things that we were talking about right here for you. And they've got it in a word form where I can talk about my class, what I know, what I don't know, which we're going to get to. I mean, how cool is that? So there's a lot of really cool resources out there, but you know, you are walking today with a couple of them that you can start using now so that you don't kind of freak out um, when it's time to plan. Let's go ahead and get back. And I'm noticing, Melissa, one of my worries that I was having was my, um, my battery life, Melissa. So you might have to share for me. All right, so I'm just letting you know to get prepared with your presentation in case you have to share for me because I might die <laughs> and then I'll have to come back to life, okay? So um, let's go back here to my screen. Where we study is just as important. So when we think of where we are studying, I've got three pictures here. I've got someone studying by themselves at their desk and that's fine and dandy. 
I've got some students that are kind of working together. They're on, you know, tablets or something. And then I have students that are sitting outside. Where we study is important. And the reason being is there is a difference between passive and active learning and studying. Research has shown that when we reread things over and over, it does not increase our understanding and our knowledge. We don't do better just by rereading things. When we sit on our bed and read something, or when we sit on our bed and review notes, we are not doing anything physically active with our body. So we are not, we're not sparking our brain. So there are some really cool methods for active learning. And some of those things include talking. So find a friend, talk out loud. If you don't have anybody to study with, get up and walk around the house and talk out loud. Because if you say it, you hear it. If you hear it, you remember it. So talking is super important with active learning. Teach someone else. Okay, maybe your sister doesn't want to hear about your biology terms, but if you teach them to her, that is that is an additional way of you remembering the information more yourself. Writing out key points. I noticed that some of you wrote that in the poll that writing out key points was very helpful for you. And that is awesome. That is a very active way. And they always say that writing helps you remember better. Creating flashcards for yourself. And I'm gonna show you a really cool um, link where you can create flashcards and make your own game quizzing yourself with these flashcards or quizzing yourself with someone, even if you're doing it on Zoom, is really, really helpful. Quiz a friend. If you can find someone in your class, a peer, a classmate, maybe create a study group. Maybe each of you takes five different cards. You get to know them well and then quiz each other. These are all wonderful ways to show active learning because you as you can see, I bolded these words, talk, teach, write, create, quiz. These are all active, they're active engagement. So they're going to be sparking your brain. So let me stop there and see if anybody has any questions so far. No questions? All right. So, how do you support memory and recall? So let's think about what it is that you may already know. What is it that you do not know or understand? And what is it that you kind of remember or understand? These things are really, really important. And I'll tell you why in just a second. So when we think of memory and recall, especially when we're talking about exams and tests and big overarching projects that require a lot of attention, not only can we use our own study notes as resources, but there's a lot of things online that we can use. And look, there's that red asterisk again. So I've got some um, online links here. Some of you have probably heard of these things. You might've used them in high school. You might've used them in college. Sparknotes has been very popular. Quizlet and Khan Academy have been very popular. But have you ever heard of Study Stack? Have you ever heard of Quiz Is? These are all remarkable online sources that already have some pre-made flashcards for some of our college courses that we're working in right now. If you have a very specialized class, you can still go into some of these websites and create your own flashcards to create games. And I'm gonna show you that in just a minute. But first let's talk about color coding because earlier I talked about what to know, what you don't know and what you kind of know. There's a stoplight method for that. So think of a stoplight and think of the colors. Think about things, if you had, like um, study notes, maybe you've got a list of words, vocabulary words, perhaps your instructors have given you some kind of a study sheet for your final exams. Think about color coding that study resource or, or your notes before you even start studying. Look at the things and ask yourself, do I really know these things? Do I understand them? And if the answer is yes, highlight them or put a little green dot next to those terms. 
If there are things that you're kind of like, I kind of know it, but I don't know if I can really clearly explain it super well, but I kind of get it. If it was a multiple choice, I think I'd do, a, do okay. But if it was extended response, I might not do as well. Maybe those will be highlighted in yellow. If there's things that you have just completely missed, you maybe were absent that week, or it's just a concept that has just been so difficult, put that in red. So there's your stoplight. You can do that with your notes, with a study sheet. Even if you've made flashcards, you can color code them that way as well. And here's how you'll work with that. So I'm going to use Biology 101 as an example. So for my biology exam, I have a lot of cell structure vocabulary that I have to I have to know, I'm gonna to have to know these terms. I know that there's gonna be multiple choice. I know there's gonna be short response. I know there's gonna be a couple of extended paragraph responses. So I went through all of these and in green, I highlighted the things that I really did feel comfortable with, okay? The things in yellow, I, I'm kind of getting it, but I really feel I need to spend a little bit more time on those. And the, re the things in red, ugh, I haven't gotten. Well, I can see here I've got 19 vocabulary words. And out of that, I have, let's see, I've got three, four. I have seven of these that I really understand. That's about 37% of the information that I kind of get right now. Okay, not great, right? But you know what? If I spent the majority of my time studying the things in yellow, I will then have un better understood 16 out of the 19 um, topics for my exam. And that is now 85% of the content. One of the things that we tend to do when we study, we tend to study over the things we already know. And you know why we do that? Because it makes us feel comfortable. We tend to do things that make us feel good. So we will tend to reread something we already know, or we'll look at vocabulary words that we already understand. That's wasted time. So we need to kind of break out of our comfort zone and go into things that maybe we kind of understand. If we go right into the things that we don't understand, that might just lead to frustration, and then we'll save it for the night before, and we'll really never get it. So if we could go to the things that we kind of understand and spend the majority of our time there, chances are it's going to yield a greater percentage of the overall topics that we need to learn. If you start feeling better and better and some of those yellows can then turn to green, then start spending a little bit more time on those reds as well. And if we can kind of, you know, pace ourselves a little bit each day, that's another great strategy. So let me stop right there and see if anybody has any questions about the stoplight method. Anybody try this before or something like this? I have just not with studying, um, more of like for our method of therapy, um, you stoplight, you know, your anxieties. Um, and did it, did it work? Did you feel it, it worked? It did. Yeah. Um, I, I was pregnant at the time, so it definitely did work. Um, well, I well your suitcase, now. well, your suitcase was very full at that time. It was, sure. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. But it did work. Um, it is still a method that I subconsciously use now. So certain things okay. I will file away in the red, you know, like something yeah. that, you know, needs to be done now. I do it in red. Something that can wait a few months will be in the yellow and something that could be like a year or so is in the green. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's, that's yeah. really important. So now you've heard it from someone else, not just me, that this can work for not just studying, but for life, for life events as well. So the stoplight method is, is a great method for sure. So here's my asterisk again to help me with, remember, with remembering that there's going to be a couple of links that we're going to put into the chat box. But have you ever used online quizzes or games to help you study? Well, we gave you links to things like Khan Academy and Spark Notes, Quizlet. Those are things that are super duper popular. But I'd like to introduce you to Study Stack and Quizzes as well, because these, these are some of the top 
known online resources along with Quizlet and Khan Academy that are known for online studying. And they already have some pre-made information that can be really helpful for our college courses. So they're not, it's not just for high school anymore. There's a lot of college coursework in these things. Even if you're in like a literature class and you're reading novels, there's a lot of information in flashcards on the novels. There's things in math, biologies, um, psychology. There's tons of different resources. So I really, I invite you to look at these. I'm, I'm a little bit nervous to go out because I know that my battery is dying, but Melissa's going to cover for me in case I go out and have to come back in. You all know that that might happen, but I did want to share with you real quick what study stack and quiz is looks like. So I'm just going to go in and the first thing we're going to look at is study stack. And I want to show you what it looks like because it's kind of cool. And they do a color coded method. All right. So thumbs up if you can see my screen that says, what are neurotransmitters? Excellent. This is StudyStack. You can literally, you don't even have to have an account. You can just go right on studystack.com and you can literally type in, you could type in biology, psychology, algebra two. I mean, you could type in all kinds of things, Romeo and Juliet. And there's all of these pre-made flashcards or you can create an account and create your own flashcards. So I pretended that we are in psychology 101, one of my exams that are coming up and I found some flashcards here. And I see here that I've got question and answer, but if I scroll down, here's my color coding again. Maybe I know these, but maybe I don't know some of these and I can put them right here in my don't know file. And that way I'm quizzing myself so I know all of those things that I know, that's awesome. Oh. I think we may have lost Kit. <laughs> We'll, we'll start it up from where she was. <laughs> um, Kylie, if you wanna just go to the final reflections um, and then maybe when Kit hops on, she can explain some of those for us. Or we can go over some um, while she's waiting. So yeah, I know Kit will better explain um, the website she was on. So I'll just jump to the final reflections until she hops back on. Um, but one of the big things, and I can agree with this as well, is um, don't cram for tests. Um, test yourself, space out study sessions, write out your own study notes, study with a friend or a classmate, change locations and move around move away from distractions and find time to exercise and sleep. Um, and looking at this list, I think for myself, I know um, cramming is something that really overloads my brain. <laughs> I'm somebody that needs to kind of take 15, 20, 30 minute chunks and then take 30 minutes off. And I find when I do that, um, it really helps with the anxiety or the stress of, of preparing for a test. It lets your mind kind of subconsciously soak in what you're thinking and instead of trying to think about all those thoughts at once. <laughs> um, I'm also somebody who writes down um, a lot of their own study notes. I find that when I write things, I remember it a lot more well. Um, and that doesn't work for everybody, but I think the biggest thing about studying is trying out these different things and seeing what works for you, what doesn't, and, and really finding your strategy for how you can succeed. Um, and I think Kit's back on here. And I know she's a lot better than me, but those are my suggestions um, for, for you all. So I'll give it back to Kit. <laughs> I am so, I knew that was going to happen and I'm so sorry. Do you think we could go back? Would that be okay if we could go back? to the slide before. Okay. And since I am, um, 
I'm wondering, would you be able to screen share, um, go back to study stack for me? Would that be possible? So yeah, click on that and you might have to screen share it. And I am so sorry, everybody. So while Melissa is doing that, Melissa, you might have to go out and screen share if that's okay, the link. So just real quick, and I'm, I apologize for that. My, my home computer died. So in Study Stack, they have these flashcards and you can put them in the pockets. So you can put them in the know and don't know pockets. So when we think of that stoplight method, Study Stack already has kind of like a stoplight method already in, um, in the way that they use their, their cards. But if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you will see that you can use those same cards. You can use that same information and you can create different games. So I know like right now, we are still looking at the screen. So we have to probably stop screen sharing. And then if we could go ahead and screen share, there we go. So see the bottom of the screen there, you can see a matching game, a snowman game, which is like hangman, a crossword puzzle. You can create your test, your own test and quizzes. So if you have flashcards that you're using, you can take these the same information and it could be in any subject area and you can create a whole new game whether it's another test a matching game a crossword puzzle so that is one element that i wanted to share with you so um study stack to me it's it's very similar to quizlet but a lot of people have never heard of study stack before so i wanted to share that element since it is a brand it's it's another way of looking at how to do some active studying especially using a lot of vocabulary and things that require a lot of attention to you know like memorizing terminology so the next thing that i want us to look at is if you can if you can go ahead and copy the link for quiz is, and I don't know if you'll be able to access it. Hopefully you will, but quiz is, you all can look at quizzes. I know it was put in the chat box as well, but quiz is, would you be able to um, click on that and see if it comes up? I'm not sure if it'll come up for you, but let's try it. I know Kylie, both Kylie and Melissa are my my go-tos today, so thank you so much. Okay, excellent. Can you go to the bottom where it says timer? Can you click the timer button off? And can you click start, please? Excellent. And in three, two, one, ding. So in my class, in Math 101, one of the things that we're going to be studying is the law of signs. So quizzes and is another one of these games where are online games where there's already a lot of pre-made information related to a lot of our common college courses that are provided for you. And it's cool because you earn points, you get special powers when you get to a certain number. And it's it when you get something wrong, it gives you um, a chance to uh, that you get like a redemption at the end to re-answer the question. So if you are having trouble with some of the information, you get, have a chance to, to guess these at the end as well. So it's just another way to study that can just be a little bit more exciting than laying on your bed and rereading a book. So thank you so much for um, showing those. So if we can go ahead and go back to our presentation. And while we're doing that, I just wanna ask anybody who's in our audience right now, does anybody um, use online games or has used any of that kind of flashcard kind of game to help themselves in the past? And I remember when we did our um, when we did our poll today, it was kind of so so. So I wasn't sure. I used it before. I used Quizlet. It and what what did you use Quizlet for and what kind of material did you use? I used the Quizlet for an English course uh, at a different school. Was it helpful? 
It was helpful, yeah. I, it was new to me, yes, and I, I was able to get a C on that test. Excellent. Thank you so much. So another testimony to why active studying is so important. AJ, thank you so much for sharing that with us. That's awesome. So think about the different methods for active studying. Remember, we talked about talking it out, quizzing a friend, rewriting notes, creating flashcards, finding a new location to study. One of the things that I, that was always helpful for me was walking up and just walking around. I might've even had my notebook in my arms, but walking around while I was talking out loud, because then when it was time for me to sit down and actually do my test, I would go back in my memory to remember, remember you were walking around in the living room, you had on green shorts and it was kind of hot out. Remember that? And that really jogs everything about that day or that event that I was studying. So where you study is as important as what you study, but how you focus on what you're studying and really making sure that you're not spending too much time on the things you already know is really, really important. So as we begin to wrap up today, let's think about some really good study strategies. And these have been these have been said before. I'm sure your instructors have shared these with you. I know we've had other um, we've had other professionals, you know, um, sessions in the past. Um, Allison Brewer, who's with me today, she has given some study strategies. So these are not new, but they're always good for us to remember. Cramming for tests usually doesn't work. It's very short term. So if you are one of those people that studies the night before, it might work for you, but chances are it doesn't work for the majority of us. Test yourself. Use those active studying strategies, those flashcards, those online quizzes, color coding, walking around. Pace out how you study. And it might begin by using one of those study plans. Maybe go to the um, Learning Center link that I showed you from the University of North Carolina or use the blank sheet that, I, that we provided in the chat box today and just kind of write out what it is you need to study, when you need to study, where are the resources. Maybe you need to rewrite your notes. That wasn't something that usually worked for me, but I do know a lot of people that do it. And I did see that that was one of the higher um, study strategies when we took our poll today was rewriting notes. Studying with a friend or a classmate is really good. And don't think of it as goofing off because it, they can be your accountability partner. Even if you are studying for different things, being next to each other, you can kind of help each other like stay on track. And it's just kind of that person like they're in the same boat as you studying. So, hey, if you're starting to drift off, hey, shh, okay, let's go. Ten more, ten more minutes. You can do this. Um, change locations. Move around. Get off the bed. Get away from your desk. Stand up. Sit on the floor. Go outside. Find a new place to study. Move away from distractions. I know this can be your best friend and maybe some of your study notes are on here and I get that. But if Netflix is on here, if YouTube is on here, if Angry Birds or whatever else is on here, you're not studying. So try and find a way to get rid of your distractions, even if for short periods of time, maybe take your phone away for 20 minutes and then get it. Um, so just even just removing distractions, even for a short period of time. And then tried and true, your brain is no good without sleep, rest, exercise. So make sure that your suitcase is not full when you're studying. Do you have something to drink? Did you get a little rest? Did you stand up and stretch beforehand? All of those elements are super duper important. For studying. Your brain needs to be healthy in order to absorb all of that information. And remember, December is, it is the craziest month of the year. So it is a time when we're really not as focused as we probably should be. Next slide. So here are some more resources. And I'm not sure if there's an asterisk on this slide because my, my, um, thing is, is covering it, but there should be. So we should have some resources. 
there are some really good links about some study tips and I tried to keep them re relatively brief, but a lot of the information that we talked today has been a lot of studies from Harvard University. So if we could go back just a second, um, is from Harvard University. So I just kind of wanted to share that, you know, this isn't just kit information sharing with you. Th these are a lot of studies that have been done on the past with, with how students work best, study best, remember best, focus best. Um, six study tips for college students. And then I'm taking you back to the University of North Carolina. University of North Carolina has a lot of great tips for education and students and studying. They do a lot of studies. And so I, I tend to find a lot of information from there, but hopefully some of these resources will be helpful for you along the way. Um, so that is really our session for today on attention, memory, focus, getting us ready for finals, getting us kind of prepared to realize that we need to have a suitcase that's ready for this information. And there's ways that we can do it to make us more efficient and not feel so stressed out. So I really want to thank you all so much for your time and attention. I apologize for the little glitch. Thank you for allowing me to, to come back in. Um, that's a little embarrassing, but you know what? Life happens. Um, so I just wanted to ask if anybody had any questions about some of the strategies or resources that they wanted to ask before we stopped recording. No? All right, so I guess we can go ahead and end our recording. And I'd like to say thank you to everybody and I wish you well for your finals and exams and hope everybody has a wonderful rest of the semester. Thank you so much. And we will turn off